Hi everyone, I'm just going to show you what I do when I first get an order for a shoe cake. I first go online and find images of the shoe. I want to get really clear images and um, that have really great detail on there and different angles as well. So what I do is I, I print that out and I print out a second copy as well. I also print out different angles of the shoe, so the back of the shoe, the base of your, your shoe, um, just so that I've got um, different templates to work with when I'm carving my cake. I also like to carve out a board the same shape as my shoe, that way when I'm building my cake on there, if I need to move my shoe from one board to another board or for whatever reason I need to move the cake, um, I can do that because it has a base underneath it. If I don't, then I can't. Once I've put my cake on the board, I cannot move it. So here I've got a, a bit of silver cardboard and I'm going to put my base template on there and cut it out um, so that I can use that underneath my cake. So the first step that I do is I cut away my excess mud cake. Now I will be using some of that excess mud cake to build on my shoe to give it height, but there will be a lot of um, scrap and leftover mud cake, which you can freeze or you can use to make um, cake pops or you can make mini cakes. There's so many things that you can do with your excess um, mud cake. Uh, my family love to eat any cutoffs that I have um, from my cake making. Now using the base template, I'm going to cut around um, my template to get the basic shape of my shoe. Uh, make sure when you're cutting that you're cutting straight down and that your knife is straight because if it's on an angle, you're going to find that you're going to change the shape of the shoe and you don't want that, so cutting straight down. Before I pull away the excess mud cake here, I'm going to use my side template to carve the back of the cake and to carve the front um, using that template as a guide. Here is what I'm looking at on my iPad. It just shows me all different angles of the shoe, which is perfect for this project. I'm using ganache to secure the silver board to the white board and then also the mud cake to the silver board. Using the excess mud cake, I'm going to cut out now the top part of the shoe cake um, using the base template. Once again, using that side template to cut the cake to size. Now I'm just using a bit of ganache to glue these pieces together. Now using my laptop as a reference, I'm going to start carving my um, shoe and just rounding off the edges and just giving it more shape. I'm using the back template here to shape the cake. When I'm happy with the shape of my cake, then I can start ganaching it. Once I've applied the ganache evenly, I'm just going to try and smooth it out as much as possible because the smoother the finish is here, the smoother my fondant finish will be. Once I finish ganaching my cake, this will go into the fridge and my ganache will firm up before I put my fondant on. 
as you can see with this template there are layers of leather so I'm going to try and replicate that with the fondant so what I have to do is I have to work my way backwards from what is the last step that I'm going to do with this cake right through to what's the first step so I'm actually going to um, label each step that I have to do working backwards I'm just going to show you the templates that I make for my fondant pieces. Um, basically I just trace out each shape, each layer that I'm going to do and um, I obviously allow a little bit extra space because I'm wrapping it around a 3D cake and not on a flat 2D image. Okay, my cake is nice and firm now. It's been in the fridge for a while, so I'm going to brush it with hot water. This will make it sticky so that when I put my fondant on it, it would um, stick to the ganache. Well, the first part I'm going to do is cover the opening of the shoe, which is at the top, and I'm gonna do that with some black fondant. The next bit I'm going to do is the tongue and the front part of the shoe. Now I don't need a template for this, I just need to make sure that I've got enough that's going to cover that the whole front of the shoe and then I will carve any excess fondant away. And I need to make sure that there's going to be at least an inch at the top that is excess so that that's going to be the tongue that's going to be sitting upright. Now I want the top of the tongue to be sticking upright and to dry that way so I'm going to scrunch up some glad wrap to support it and um, for it to be held up until it dries into that position. While the fondant is soft and fresh I'm going to make impressions using a balling tool just to replicate um, the real shoe and how it has holes at the front. With the next piece of fondant, I'm actually going to wrap it around the back of the cake and have it meet up with the fondant that's at the front. I'm actually not going to be too fussed about um, how perfect it is or if there's any gaps because there's going to be many layers that are going to be on top of this one and you won't see those imperfections. I'm going to do the inner layer of the shoe at the top right now and um, I'm going to use an impression mat to give it that realistic sort of um, fabric effect. Just using a water brush to stick the fondant to um, my cake. I'm going to use my first template which is the grey part of the front of the shoe. Now I'm just going to cut around my template at the top and I'm not going to carve the bottom, I'm just going to do that once it's on the cake then I'll know how much I need to cut away. I'm going to use a stitching tool to create the stitch effect that you see on the shoe. Um, it's a small um, detail but it's very effective. My next piece is the grey part that goes around the back of the shoe. So I'm just going to cut that out using my template and then I'm going to do a double stitch using my stitching tool and also punch two holes on either end of the piece. Um, this is where the laces go into. Now I'm not going to use this piece straight away so what I need to do is put it in some glad wrap and stop it from drying out too quickly. Um, I need, need it to be pliable so I can wrap it around the cake. This is another piece that I'm going to be wrapping around the back of the cake so I'm just going to cut that out using my template, do my stitching on it and then glue it to my shoe cake.
now I'm ready to wrap this around my cake I'm just gonna make sure that it is in position and it's the right length and size before I secure it with a bit of water just adding some small detail with a stitching tool Now I'm going to add that grey piece that I had sitting in some glad wrap and I'm just going to wrap it around the cake and um, cut off any excess pieces. As I turn my cake around I noticed that the grey strip had stretched um, so what I'm going to do is sticking out too far so I'm going to just cut um, the ends off and then re um, stitch that area and punch some new holes in that space. Well the next piece is the grey strips on either side of the shoe um, where the lace holes are. So I'm just going to cut that out with a template. Um, I'm going to do some stitching and also punch the holes where the laces need to go into. I'll need to reverse my template for the other side and do the same thing. Now I'm going to use a bit of water to secure that to my cake. I noticed on this side of the cake that the strip is too long and I'm going to have to cut it short. I know this is what happens when you're working with cake. Um, it's never perfect so um, I would just work around that. If I need to punch another hole I'll do that. Now I'm using the next template to make the two grey bits on either side that are the last two um, lace holes that you see at the end of the shoe. Um, so I'm just going to use a template, cut them out and um, do my double stitching and punch my holes. Now as I'm putting this piece on I'm realizing that I'm going to have to punch um, another hole here on this side like I mentioned earlier because I've had to cut the strip shorter um, which is no problem I mean it doesn't match exactly the other side but um, you can only see one side of the shoe at a time so we can get away with that um, it will still work in the end this is the next template that I want to cut out um, this is for the back of the cake as well so I'm just going to Cut around my template, I'm going to do my stitching and then I'm going to put this piece in some glad wrap because I'm not ready to put it on the cake just yet. I have one more piece that I want to add before this goes on. As you can see on the template there is a black and white Dior pattern on the sides of the shoe. So I am just um, went online and I found the pattern and I printed it on edible paper. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the Nike logo to cut out two pieces that are going to go on either side of the shoe. On the real shoe, the Nike logo has a black stitching all the way around. Um, so the way I'm going to replicate that is I'm going to roll out some black fondant. Then I'm going to cut around the Nike logo, leaving a border all the way around um, so that it replicates that black um, yeah, border that you see on the shoe.
Now it's time to stick it on the cake and I'm looking at my iPad to make sure I've got it in the right position. And um, you'll probably notice as I'm putting on my second piece that they're not matching at the back and that's totally fine because I'm actually going to have a um, grey tab that um, is actually on the real shoe but it's it sort of um, is a joint at the back and that's going to cover that gap that you see. Now using that piece I had in glad wrap, I'm going to wrap that around the back and um, secure that to my cake. Now I've almost finished the layers on my cake, I just have a white strip to put around and also a very thin blue strip. Now I'm going to use a knife to make a mark at the top of this white strip all the way around and this is going to replicate um, the stitching line that you see on a real shoe. I'm also going to use a balling tool to make small holes that you see in the stitching line. This particular shoe also has lines on the bottom blue strip so I'm just going to use a knife to make those markings and I'm only going to go halfway down the shoe because that's what they're like on the real shoe. Now it's time to make the shoelaces. I'm going to use this cutting tool to cut them out and I'm going to use an impression mat to also give that fabric sort of um, look as well. I'm not too fast about the length of my um, pieces because I'm going to cut them on the cake to the length that I need. I'm actually doing the under and over technique that you see with shoelaces on a shoe. Um, I'm looking at my template and just copying that pattern and working my way up. You probably notice the white tab that's on the tongue there that's over over the grey laces. Um, I didn't film that for some reason so it's just a white fondant strip that I've folded back and then used the stitching tool to stitch along the bottom there. And here is the finished product and as you can see I used the edible um, Dior logo on the tongue and also on the side of the cake. If you enjoyed this tutorial just subscribe to my channel and whenever I put up a new video you'll be notified. Thank you for watching.